Oskar Schindler was an ethnic German industrialist, German spy, and member of the Nazi Party who is credited with saving the lives of 1,200 Jews during the Holocaust by employing them in his Enumware and ammunitions factories, which were located in what is now Poland and the Czech Republic respectively. He is the subject of the 1982 novel Schindler's Ark, and the subsequent 1993 film Schindler's List which reflected his life as an opportunist initially motivated by profit who came to show extraordinary initiative, tenacity, and dedication in order to save the lives of his Jewish employees. Schindler grew up in Switau, Moravia, and worked in several trades until he joined the Abwehr, the intelligence service of Nazi Germany, in 1936. He joined the Nazi party in 1939. Prior to the German occupation of Czechoslovakia in 1938, he collected information on railways and troop movements for the German government. He was arrested for espionage by the Czech government but was released under the terms of the Munich Agreement in 1938. Schindler continued to collect information for the Nazis, working in Poland in 1939 before the invasion of Poland at the start of World War II. In 1939 Schindler obtained a Nienemlewer factory in Krakow W, Poland, which employed around 1,750 workers, of whom a thousand were Jews at the factory's peak in 1944. His Abwehr connections helped Schindler to protect his Jewish workers from deportation and death in the Nazi concentration camps. Initially Schindler was interested in the money-making potential of the business. Later he began shielding his workers without regard for the cost. As time went on, Schindler had to give Nazi officials ever larger bribes and gifts of luxury items obtainable only on the black market to keep his workers safe. As Germany began to lose the war in July 1944, the Schutz began closing down the easternmost concentration camps and evacuating the remaining prisoners westward. Many were killed in Auschwitz and Gross Rosen concentration camp. Schindler convinced SS Hauptstamm for one quarter rare Ramon Gar paragraph th, commandant of the nearby Kraker Cube W Brosser Cube W concentration camp, to allow him to move his factory to Bra one quarter NNLITZ in the Sudetenland, thus sparing his workers from certain death in the gas chambers. Using names provided by Jewish ghetto police officer Marcel Goldberg, Gar paragraph th's secretary Meet Kpemper compiled and typed the list of 1,200 Jews who traveled to Bra one quarter NNLITZ in October 1944. Schindler continued to bribe SS officials to prevent the slaughter of his workers until the end of World War II in Europe in May 1945, by which time he had spent his entire fortune on bribes and black market purchases of supplies for his workers. Schindler moved to Germany after the war where he was supported by assistance payments from Jewish relief organizations. After receiving a partial reimbursement for his wartime expenses, he moved with his wife to Argentina, where they took up farming. When he went bankrupt in 1958, Schindler left his wife and returned to Germany, where he failed at several business ventures and relied for financial support on his Schindler Juden Euro the people whose lives he had saved during the war. He was named righteous among the nations by the Israeli government in 1963 and died on October 9, 1974. Early life and career, Schindler was born on April 28, 1908 into a Sudeten German family in Switau, Moravia, Austria-Hungary. His father was Johann Hans Schindler, the owner of a farm machinery business, and his mother was Franziska Fanny Schindler. His sister, Elfried, was born in 1915. After attending primary and secondary school, Schindler enrolled in a technical school, from which he was expelled in 1924 for forging his report card. He later graduated, but did not take the abitur exams that would have enabled him to go to college or university. Instead he took courses in Pno and several trades, including chauffeuring and machinery, and worked for his father for three years. A fan of motorcycles since his youth, Schindler bought a 250cc Moto Guzzi racing motorcycle and competed recreationally in mountain races for the next few years. On March 6, 1928, Schindler married Amali Pelzl, daughter of a prosperous Sudeten German farmer from Meltheim. The young couple moved in with Oscar's parents and occupied the upstairs rooms, 
where they lived for the next seven years. Soon after his marriage, Schindler quit working for his father and took a series of jobs, including a position at Moravian Electrotechnik and the management of a driving school. After an 18-month stint in the Czech Army, where he rose to the rank of Lance Corporal in the 10th Infantry Regiment of the 31st Army, Schindler returned to Moravian Electrotechnik, which went bankrupt shortly afterwards. His father's farm machinery business closed around the same time, leaving Schindler unemployed for a year. He took a job with Jaroslav Simk Bank of Prague in 1931, where he worked until 1938. Schindler was arrested several times in 1931 and 1932 for public drunkenness. Also around this time he had an affair with Eli Schlegel, a school friend. She bore him a daughter, Emily, in 1933, and a son, Oscar J.R., in 1935. Schindler later claimed the boy was not his son. Schindler's father, an alcoholic, abandoned his wife in 1935. She died a few months later after a lengthy illness. Schindler joined the separatist Sudeten German Party in 1935. Although he was a citizen of Czechoslovakia, Schindler became a spy for the Abwehr, the intelligence service of Nazi Germany, in 1936. He was assigned to Abwehr Stil II Commando 8, based in Breslau. He later told Czech police that he did it because he needed the money. By this time Schindler had a drinking problem and was chronically in debt. His tasks for the IB were included collecting information on railways, military installations, and troop movements, as well as recruiting other spies within Czechoslovakia, in advance of a planned invasion of the country by Nazi Germany. He was arrested by the Czech government for espionage on July 18, 1938 and immediately imprisoned but was released as a political prisoner under the terms of the Munich Agreement, the instrument under which the Czech Sudetenland was annexed into Germany on October 1. Schindler applied for membership in the Nazi Party on November 1 and was accepted the following year. After some time off to recover in Zwitau, Schindler was promoted to second-in-command of his Abwehr unit and relocated with his wife to Ostrava, on the Czech-Polish border, in January 1939. He was involved in espionage in the months leading up to Hitler's seizure of the remainder of Czechoslovakia in March. Emily helped him with paperwork, processing and hiding secret documents in their apartment for the Abwehr office. As he frequently traveled to Poland on business, he and his 25 agents were in a position to collect information about Polish military activities and railways for the planned invasion of Poland. One assignment called for his unit to monitor and provide information about the railway line and tunnel in the Jablonkov Pass, deemed critical for the movement of German troops. The route was captured intact by the German 14th Army on September 1, 1939, in the opening hours of World War II in Europe. Schindler continued to work for Abwehr until as late as fall 1940, when he was sent to Turkey to investigate corruption among the Abwehr officers assigned to the German embassy there. World War II, Emilia, Schindler first arrived in Krakow Cube W in October 1939 on a Boer business and took an apartment the following month. Emily maintained the apartment in Ostrava and visited Oscar in Krakow Cube W at least once a week. In November 1939, he contacted interior decorator Myla Fufberg to decorate his new apartment. Her son, Leopold Poldek Fufberg, soon became one of his contacts for black market trading. They eventually became lifelong friends. Also that November, Schindler was introduced to Itzak Stern, an accountant for Schindler's fellow Abwehr agent Joseph Sephor, who had taken over Stern's formerly Jewish-owned place of employment as a Chiwanda. Property belonging to Polish Jews, including their possessions, places of business, and homes was seized by the Germans beginning immediately after the invasion and Jewish citizens were stripped of their civil rights. Schindler showed Stern the balance sheet of a company he was thinking of acquiring, an Ingemware factory called Record Limited owned by a consortium of Jewish businessmen that had filed for bankruptcy earlier that year. Stern advised him that rather than running the company as a trusteeship under the auspices of the Hope to and Stellost, he should buy or lease the business, as that would give him more freedom from the dictates of the Nazis including the freedom to hire more Jews. With the financial backing of several Jewish investors, 
Schindler signed an informal lease agreement on the factory on November 13, 1939 and formalized the arrangement on January 15, 1940. He renamed it Deutsche Emailwarenfabrik or DEF, and it soon became known by the nickname Emilia. He initially acquired a staff of seven Jewish workers and 250 non-Jewish Poles. At its peak in 1944, the business employed around 1,750 workers, a thousand of whom were Jews. Schindler also helped run Schlomo Wiener Limited, a wholesale outfit that sold his Enumware, and was leaseholder of Prakosh Zina Glasher One Quarter TTE, a glass factory. Schindler's ties with the Abwehr and his connections in the Wehrmacht and its armaments inspectorate enabled him to obtain contracts to produce enamel cookware for the military. These connections also later helped him protect his Jewish workers from deportation and death. As time went on, Schindler had to give Nazi officials ever larger bribes and gifts of luxury items obtainable only on the black market to keep his workers safe. Bankia, a key black market connection, obtained goods for bribes as well as extra materials for use in the factory. Schindler himself enjoyed a lavish lifestyle and pursued extramarital relationships with his secretary, Victoria Klonuska, and Eva Kischer, a merchant specializing in Enumware from DEF. Emily Schindler visited for a few months in 1940 and moved to Kreka Cube W to live with Oscar in 1941. Initially, Schindler was mostly interested in the money-making potential of the business and hired Jews because they were cheaper than Poles a euro the wages were set by the occupying Nazi regime. Later he began shielding his workers without regard for cost. The status of his factory as a business essential to the war effort became a decisive factor enabling him to help his Jewish workers. Whenever Schindler Juden were threatened with deportation, he claimed exemptions for them. Wives, children, and even persons with disabilities were claimed to be necessary mechanics and metal workers. On one occasion, the Gestapo came to Schindler demanding that he hand over a family with forged identity papers. Three hours after they walked in, Schindler said, two drunk Gestapo men reeled out of my office without their prisoners and without the incriminating documents they had demanded. On August 1, 1940 Governor Hans Frank issued a decree requiring all Kreka Cube W Jews to leave the city within the next two weeks. Only those who had jobs directly related to the German war effort would be allowed to stay. Of the 60,000 to 80,000 Jews then living in the city, only 15,000 remained by March 1941. These Jews were then forced to leave their traditional neighborhood of Kazimierz and relocate to the walled Kreka Cube W ghetto, established in the industrial Poja Cube Dal ZE district. Schindler's workers traveled on foot to and from the ghetto each day to their jobs at the factory. Enlargements to the facility in the four years Schindler was in charge included the addition of an outpatient clinic, co-op, kitchen and dining room for the workers, in addition to expansion of the factory and its related office space. Prosa Cube W, in fall 1941 the Nazis began transporting Jews out of the ghetto. Most of these were sent to Bielzec extermination camp and killed. On March 13, 1943 the ghetto was liquidated and those still fit for work were sent to the new concentration camp at Prosa Cube W. Several thousand not deemed fit for work were sent to extermination camps and killed. Hundreds more were killed on the streets by the Nazis as they cleared out the ghetto. Schindler, aware of the planned action because of his Wehrmacht contacts, had his workers stay at the factory overnight to prevent them coming to any harm. Schindler witnessed the liquidation of the ghetto and was appalled. From that point forward, says Schindler Jude Solerbach, Schindler changed his mind about the Nazis. He decided to get out and to save as many Jews as he could. Prosa Cube W concentration camp opened in March 1943 on the former site of two Jewish cemeteries on Jerozolimska Street, about 2.5 kilometers from the DEF factory. In charge of the camp was SS Hauptsturm for one quarter air Ramon Gar paragraph th, a brutal sadist who would shoot inmates of the camp at random. Inmates at Prosa Cube W lived in constant daily fear for their lives. Emily Schindler called Gar Paragraph TH the most despicable man I have ever met. Initially Gar Paragraph TH's plan was that all the factories, including Schindler's, should be moved inside the camp gates. 
However, Schindler, with a combination of diplomacy, flattery, and bribery, not only prevented his factory from being moved, but convinced Gar Paragraph TH to allow him to build a subcamp at Emilia to house his workers plus 450 Jews from other nearby factories. There they were safe from the threat of random execution, were well fed and housed, and were even permitted to undertake religious observances. Schindler was arrested twice on suspicion of black market activities and once for breaking the Nuremberg laws by kissing a Jewish girl, an action forbidden by the Race and Resettlement Act. The first arrest, in late 1941, led to him being kept overnight. His secretary arranged for his release through Schindler's influential contacts in the Nazi Party. His second arrest, on April 29, 1942, was the result of his kissing a Jewish girl on the cheek at his birthday party at the factory the previous day. He remained in jail five days before his influential Nazi contacts were able to obtain his release. The third arrest, where he was accused of black marketeering and bribing Gar Paragraph TH and others to improve the conditions of the Jewish workers, took place in October 1944. He was held for most of a week and released. Gar Paragraph TH had been arrested on September 13, 1944 for corruption and other abuses of power, and Schindler's arrest was part of the ongoing investigation into Gar Paragraph TH's activities. Gar Paragraph TH was never convicted on those charges, but was hanged for war crimes on September 13, 1946. In 1943 Schindler was contacted by members of the Jewish resistance movement by Zionist leaders in Budapest. Schindler traveled there several times to report in person on Nazi mistreatment of the Jews. He brought back funding provided by the Jewish Agency for Israel and turned it over to the Jewish underground. Bra one quarter NNLITZ, as the Red Army drew nearer in July 1944, the SS began closing down the easternmost concentration camps and evacuating the remaining prisoners westward to Auschwitz and Gross Rosen concentration camp. Gar Paragraph TH's personal secretary, Meet Pemper, alerted Schindler to the Nazis' plans to close all factories not directly involved in the war effort, including Schindler's Enumware facility. Pemper suggested to Schindler that production should be switched from cookware to anti tank grenades in an effort to save the lives of the Jewish workers. Using bribery and his powers of persuasion, Schindler convinced Gar Paragraph TH and the officials in Berlin to allow him to move his factory and his workers to Bra 1 quarter NNLITZ, in the Sudetenland, thus sparing them from certain death in the gas chambers. Using names provided by Jewish ghetto police officer Marcel Goldberg, Pemper compiled and typed the list of 1,200 Jews a Euro 1,000 of Schindler's workers and 200 inmates from Julius Madrich's Textiles Factoria Euro, who were sent to Bra 1 quarter NNLITZ in October 1944. On October 15, 1944 a train carrying 700 men on Schindler's list were initially sent to the concentration camp at Gross Rosen where they spent about a week before being rerouted to the factory in Bra 1 quarter NNLITZ. 300 female Schindler Juden were similarly sent to Auschwitz, where they were in imminent danger of being sent to the gas chambers. Schindler's usual connections and bribes failed to garner their release. Finally he sent his secretary, Hilda Ulbricht, with bribes of black market goods, food, and diamonds and the women were sent to Bra 1 quarter NNLITZ after several harrowing weeks in Auschwitz. In addition to workers, Schindler moved 250 wagon loads of machinery and raw materials to the location of the new factory. Few if any useful artillery shells were produced at the plant. When officials from the armaments ministry questioned factory's low output, Schindler bought finished goods on the black market and resold them as his own. The rations provided by the SS were insufficient to meet the needs of the workers, so Schindler spent most of his time in Kreika Cube W, obtaining food, armaments, and other materials. His wife Emily remained in Bra 1 quarter NNLITZ, surreptitiously obtaining additional rations and caring for the workers' health and other basic needs. Schindler also arranged for the transfer of as many as 3,000 Jewish women out of Auschwitz to small textiles plants in the Sudetenland in an effort to increase their chances of surviving the war. 
In January 1945 a trainload of 250 Jews who had been rejected as workers at a mine in Goloszow in Poland arrived at Bra 1 quarter NNLITZ. The boxcars were frozen shut when they arrived, and Emily Schindler waited while an engineer from the factory opened the cars using a soldering iron. Twelve people were dead in the cars, and the remainder were too ill and feeble to work. Emily took the survivors into the factory and cared for them in a makeshift hospital until the end of the war. Schindler continued to bribe SS officials to prevent the slaughter of his workers as the Red Army approached. On May 7, 1945 he and his workers gathered on the factory floor to listen to British Prime Minister Winston Churchill announce on the radio Germany's surrender. After the war. As a member of the Nazi Party and the Abwehr Intelligence Service, Schindler was in danger of being arrested as a war criminal. Bankier, Stern, and several others prepared a statement he could present to the Americans attesting to his role saving Jewish lives. He was also given a ring, made using gold from dental work taken out of the mouth of Schindler Jude Simon Jarrett. The ring was inscribed, Whoever saves one life saves the world entire. To escape being captured by the Russians, Schindler and his wife departed westward in their vehicle, a two-seater Horch, initially with several fleeing German soldiers riding on the running boards. A truck containing Schindler's mistress Marta, several Jewish workers, and a load of black market trade goods followed behind. The Horch was confiscated by Russian troops at the town of Budway, which had already been captured by Russian troops. The Schindlers were unable to recover a diamond that Oscar had hidden under the seat. They continued by train and on foot until they reached the American lines at the town of Lenora, and then traveled to Passau, where an American Jewish officer arranged for them to travel to Switzerland by train. They moved to Bavaria in Germany in the fall of 1945. By the end of the war, Schindler had spent his entire fortune on bribes and black market purchases of supplies for his workers. Virtually destitute, he moved briefly to Regensburg and later Munich, but did not prosper in post-war Germany. In fact, he was reduced to receiving assistance from Jewish organizations. In 1948 he presented a claim for reimbursement of his wartime expenses to the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, and received $15,000. He estimated his expenditures at over $1,056,000 including the costs of camp construction, bribes, and expenditures for black market goods, including food. Schindler emigrated to Argentina in 1949, where he tried raising chickens and then nutria, a small animal raised for its fur. When the business went bankrupt in 1958, he left his wife and returned to Germany, where he had a series of unsuccessful business ventures, including a cement factory. He declared bankruptcy in 1963 and suffered a heart attack the next year, which led to a month-long stay in hospital. Remaining in contact with many of the Jews he had met during the war, including Stern and Fuffberg, Schindler survived on donations sent by Schindler Juden all over the world. He died on October 9, 1974 and is buried in Jerusalem on Mount Zion, the only member of the Nazi party to be honored in this way. For his work during the war. In 1963 Schindler was named Righteous Among the Nations, an award bestowed by the State of Israel on non-Jews who took an active role to rescue Jews during the Holocaust. Other awards include the German Order of Merit. Writer Herbert Stinhaus, who interviewed him in 1948, wrote that Schindler's exceptional deeds stemmed from just that elementary sense of decency and humanity that our sophisticated age seldom sincerely believes in. A repentant opportunist saw the light and rebelled against the sadism and vile criminality all around him. In a 1983 television documentary, Schindler was quoted as saying, I felt that the Jews were being destroyed. I had to help them. There was no choice. Legacy, Films and Book In 1951, Poldek Fuffberg approached director Fritz Lang and asked him to consider making a film about Schindler. Also on Fuffberg's initiative, in 1964 Schindler received a $20,000 advance from MGM for a proposed film treatment titled To the Last Hour. Neither film was ever made, and Schindler quickly spent the money he received from MGM. He was also approached in the 1960s by MCA of Germany and Walt Disney Productions in Vienna, but again nothing came of these projects. 
In 1980, Australian author Thomas K. Neely by chance visited Fifberg's luggage store in Beverly Hills while en route home from a film festival in Europe. Fifberg took the opportunity to tell K. Neely the story of Oscar Schindler. He gave him copies of some materials he had on file, and K. Neely soon decided to make a fictionalized treatment of the story. After extensive research and interviews with surviving Schindler Juden, his 1982 historical novel Schindler's Ark was the result. The novel was adapted into the 1993 movie Schindler's List by Steven Spielberg. After acquiring the rights in 1983, Spielberg felt he was not ready emotionally or professionally to tackle the project, and he offered the rights to several other directors. After he read a script for the project prepared by Steven Zalian for Martin Scorsese, he decided to trade him Cape Fear for the opportunity to do the Schindler biography. In the film, the character of Itzhak Stern is a composite of Stern, Bankier, and Pemper. Liam Neeson was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actor for his portrayal of Schindler in the film, which won seven Oscars, including Best Picture. Other film treatments include a 1983 British television documentary produced by John Blair for Thames Television entitled Schindler, his story as told by the actual people he saved, and a 1998 A&E biography special, Oscar Schindler, The Man Behind the List. Schindler's Suitcase, in 1997 a suitcase belonging to Schindler containing historic photographs and documents was discovered in the attic of the apartment of Ami and Heinrichstner in Ildesheim. Schindler had stayed with the couple for a few days shortly before his death. Stier's son Chris took the suitcase to Stuttgart, where the documents were examined in detail in 1999 by Dr. Wolfgang Borgmann, science editor of the Stuttgarter Zeitung. Borgmann wrote a series of seven articles, which appeared in the paper from 16 to October 26, 1999 and were eventually published in book form as Schindler's Koffer, Bereit aus dem Lebanens Lebens in documentation der Stuttgarter Zeitung. The documents and suitcase were sent to the Holocaust Museum at Yad Vashem in Israel for safekeeping in December 1999. Copies of the list. In early April 2009, a carbon copy of one version of the list was discovered at the State Library of New South Wales by workers combing through boxes of materials collected by author Thomas Keneally. The 13-page document, yellow and fragile, was filed among research notes and original newspaper clippings. The document was given to Keneally in 1980 by Fifberg when he was persuading him to write Schindler's story. This version of the list contains 801 names and is dated April 18, 1945. Fifberg is listed as worker number 173. Several authentic versions of the list exist, as the names were retyped several times as conditions changed in the hectic days at the end of the war. One of four existing copies of the list was offered at a 10-day auction starting on July 19, 2013 on Bay at a reserve price of $3 million. It received no bids. Other memorabilia, in August 2013, a one-page letter signed by Schindler on August 22, 1944 sold in an online auction for $59,135. The letter noted Schindler's permission for a factory supervisor to move machinery to Czechoslovakia. The same unknown auction buyer had previously purchased 1943 construction documents for Schindler's Krecker Cube W factory for $63,426. See also, List of individuals and groups assisting Jews during the Holocaust, List of righteous among the nations by country, List of Schindler Juden, Explanatory Notes. References. Sources: Abramson, Alana. Schindler's List received zero bids on eBay. ABC News. Retrieved July 30, 2013. A. Belafonte, Virginia. Schindler: The Real Story. The New York Times. Archived from the original on June 10, 2012. Retrieved May 20, 2010. A. Brzozquinia, Waldmer. Zabusi. Chopnia i Fabriki. Gaz to Wybacha. Archived from the original on April 18, 2010. Retrieved June 28, 2013. A. Crow, David M. Oscar Schindler, The Untold Account of His Life, Wartime Activities, and the True Story Behind the List. Cambridge, Massachusetts, 
Westview Press. ISBN A 978-0-465-00253-5. Evans, Richard J. The Third Reich in Power. New York, Penguin. ISBN A 978-0-14-303790-3A, Goodman, Walter. Oscar Schindler, The Man Behind the List. The New York Times. Archived from the original on June 10, 2013. Retrieved May 20, 2010. Caneley, Thomas. Searching for Schindler, a memoir. New York, Nanatalies. ISBN A 978-0-385-52617-3. Kepler, Adam W. Schindler letter sells for nearly $60,000. The New York Times. Retrieved August 19, 2013. A. Longeric, Peter. Holocaust, The Nazi Persecution and Murder of the Jews. Oxford. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN A 978-0-19-280436-5. McBride, Joseph, 1997. Steven Spielberg, A Biography. Jackson. University Press of Mississippi. ISBN A 978-1-60473-836-0. Roberts, Jack L. The Importance of Oscar Schindler. The Importance of Biography Series. San Diego, Lucent. ISBN A 1-56006-079-4. Schindler, M. Eiley. Rosenberg, Erica, 1996. Where Light and Shadow Meet. New York. London, Norton. ISBN A 0-393-04123-9. Silver, Eric. The Book of the Just, The Silent Heroes Who Saved Jews from Hitler. New York, Grove Press. ISBN A 978-0-297-81245-6A. Smith, Emily. Schindler A Euro 1 registered trademark S list will be publicly auctioned A Euro 1 of only four existing copies in the world. New York Post. Retrieved July 19, 2013 A. Staff. Meet Kpemper. The Daily Telegraph. Retrieved July 7, 2013 A. Staff. Schindler's list found in Sydney. BBC Online. Agent France Press. Retrieved July 17, 2013. A. Stinhaus, Herbert. The Real Oscar Schindler. Saturday Night. Retrieved June 28, 2013. A. Thompson, Bruce, Ed Oscar Schindler. People Who Made History. San Diego, Greenhaven Press. ISBN A 0 7377 0894 8. External links. Oscar Schindler at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum website, Oscar and Emily Schindler Euro Righteous Among the Nations at the Yad Vashem website, Gallery of Images of Oscar Schindler's Factory and Craig Cube W, Oscar Schindler's Factory A Euro A Branch of the Historical Museum of the City of Craig Cube W, Oscar Schindler's List at Auschwitz DK, Aerial Evidence for Schindler's List at the Yad Vashem website, Spielberg's bibliography for the film Schindler's List at the UC Berkeley Library website, Voices on Antisemitism. A Euro a podcast series, an interview with Helen Jonas Rosenzweig at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum website.